So welcome back to the Flaming Eyeball Farm. Today we're gonna to make some habanero sauce because we had such a good crop with our habanero plant. We only bought one and we ended up getting easily 50 peppers and there's probably 25 or 30 peppers still left out on the plant. It just has been doing really well. So we let some of them ripen when we brought them inside. These have been off the vine for about a week or so and we let them ripen into the yellow. I have a whole box full of habaneros and jalapenos that we have to do something with as well. So this is just a couple of days worth of jalapenos and habaneros. So we have the habaneros on this side, we have the jalapenos on this side. Some of our jalapenos are starting to turn red and they're getting really nice. So we'll do something with the jal jalapenos as well. Um, one of the things that my son said, hey, we can make poppers. So that's just stuffed with cream cheese and wrapped in bacon and then cooked. So those are really good like that. The habaneros, these are what they look like pretty much when they come right off the plants. We didn't let them ripen on the plants. We picked them all green, but we have a bunch out there that um, we're going to let ripen on the plant. We've heard that if you let the peppers ripen in different stages, then you can figure out where you like them. I personally don't like it very, very spicy um, because I like to enjoy the flavor of the food. I don't mind if it has a little bit of heat and, and, and some flavor to it, but when it's just blazing hot to where you burn all your taste buds and you just can't taste the meal, to me that's no fun. So I don't like doing that, but some people like it really hot. I don't like it really hot like that. So, so we're gonna try these two sauces today and see how they work out. One of them is a mango habanero and one of them is a pineapple habanero. So years ago, I used to sell Pampered Chef and one of the products that they have is a mango slicer and this thing works really good for slicing up mangoes because they're an odd shaped fruit and there's an odd shaped pit in it. It's called the stone and so you can peel these after you run it through this slicer that's why this slicer is shaped in the way it is because it gets the stone out of the mango really easily um, so i'm going to take that off and then i'll get as much of the meat off of the stone and peel it as i can and then we're off to the races fairly simple ingredient list onion mango carrot habanero garlic some lime juice some apple cider vinegar and some salt. So I'm gonna get all this ready and one of the things that I'm going to do is wear gloves because habaneros on your hands and you happen to itch your eye or something like that, it's all over. So I'll be taking precautions when I'm actually cutting up the pepper. I'm gonna seed these jalapenos or jalapenos, these habaneros because the seeds is what holds a lot of the heat. And so I'm gonna take that out of there and just use the habanero pepper itself. And then we'll go from there. It's really a simple recipe. I don't even know where I got it. Just downloaded it online somewhere. I just typed in easy, sweet habanero mango sauce or something and got this one. So this one, um, uh, it looks like, oh, it's Caroline's Cooking is where I got it. So we'll see how this one works out. So one of the interesting things to note is the habanero when it's all, when it's still sealed up, if you will, it doesn't seem to have a lot of smell or, or aroma, but when you crack it open, cut it open, you can, you can smell it a little bit, but it's still pretty mild. It's the, the habanero seems to me that it comes in the taste. So I'm guessing it's much like any other pepper. Take out the seeds and you take out the ribs and you take out some of the heat. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll just cut these up in little bits and these are gonna go in the food processor.
And I will tell you that that works so much easier when the, when the mango is ripe. So then I'll get the rest of this off of here because I can. And if I needed to, I, I could I could really spend the time to clean this stone off. But I think I might have enough, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Set that aside. That's that's the mango seed there. So I will clean this out. The pit will go in, or the the pit, the uh, the stone will go in the trash because I don't need this growing in my. Because I don't need it growing in my compost bin. So I've already got my two tablespoons of lime juice and adding my two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And it says one to two cloves of garlic, but I already have minced garlic, so I'm just going to use some of that. I need to peel the carrot as well. Okay, got the carrot peeled and chopped up a little bit. And basically, you just put everything in the food processor. So, I'm gonna say that's about enough garlic. I'll just add that to here. Since I'm gonna put it all in the food processor anyway. Okay, so at this point it says put everything in the food processor, which I'll put in our food processor and blend it up and then you put it in a saucepan and you heat it up for about 10 minutes and kind of bring it to a simmer which is supposed to get all the flavors and things together Dare try it before putting it in the pot to boil it down. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Just that little bit, that's gonna have some kick to it, but man, mm. that's good stuff. I do have to say, a food processor makes quick work of making a sauce like this. So I'm gonna pop it on, and we'll simmer it down. So the recipe now says that I should let it cool completely before putting it in a glass jar. So we're gonna let that cool down. And that's the mango recipe. Now I'm going to look at the pineapple recipe and see what it calls for. So while the mango sauce cools down in the pot, before I can transfer it to the jar, I'm getting all the things ready for the pineapple sauce. So obviously I have a pineapple, and we're going to use a fresh one, and I'll get two cups of pineapple out of that, hopefully. Um, some white vinegar, some lemon juice, I'm sorry, some lime juice, some salt, some cilantro, which my family loves. And in this case, it calls for five or six habaneros. So I'm gonna clean the habaneros, prep them, and then, um, like I said, I used to work for Pampered Chef, I used to sell Pampered Chef, so I have a pineapple slicer, which I'll show you how that works too. It's, it's really kind of a cool thing. Not, not endorsing Pampered Chef for any of this stuff, but they do have some good products and I was able to get a lot of good products from them so I use them. So um, you think some of these things I got long ago, I thought I'll never use that, but now I'm cooking more fresh and so I am using it. So it's kind of cool to have this stuff in the house. And this is one of those kind of recipes that I think is kind of fun. It just says a handful of cilantro. So we're gonna use a handful of cilantro. That's about a handful. And that's just gonna go 
put all of these ingredients in the food processor. Now it looks to me, preparing one of these peppers, I just sl slice the top open and you can see the ribs that are in there and much like preparing a jalapeno or a green pepper or a bell pepper, any kind of pepper, you can slice it open and then just cut the ribs out and you can get all the seeds out instead of having seeds everywhere and cutting them open and get the seeds out like that. So I'll also take the ribs out because there's some heat in the ribs. Um, something else that I noticed, I don't know if, if it's the same for habaneros, but for bell peppers at least, when I took a class at Sur La Table, they talked about having four ribs. You see this when I cut it in half, but it has four ribs in it. That indicates that it's a male, at least in a bell pepper. I don't know if it's the same way for a habanero, but this would be a male. And if it has three, like this one, if it's the same as a bell pepper, then this would be a female pe uh, pepper. So just one of those little tidbits that I didn't know when I went to Sur La Table, and I thought the, uh, I thought the chef, I thought the instructor there was messing with us. He wasn't messing with us. I looked it up and it's true. Okay, all done messing with that batch of habaneros. Now I'm gonna show you how the pineapple cutter works. Basically it just peels and, and slices up the, it doesn't slice it, it puts it in sections and then you can slice it. But I'm gonna chunk it up anyway to get two cups of pineapple for this particular recipe. We'll put it all in the food processor and watch it go. Now I cut off the bottom so I have a flat bottom for the pineapple. Today it doesn't want to work very well, obviously, because I've got it on camera. But once you get it, once you get it past the skin, which is the problem, it doesn't cut through the skin very well. It cuts through the fruit just fine though. That's how it works. Obviously a pineapple is hard to get through. So I'll clean this up and get all the bits of pineapple that I can. That tool does the hard work. So it gets the core out and it takes all the skin off. And now I have just a little bit of cleanup left to do. So and as you can see one pineapple gives me about two cups. One thing to remember about a food processor, in order for it to work, you actually have to put the blade in it. The blade sitting on the counter by itself does absolutely no good, as you just witnessed. Most of the recipes that I found for anything containing habanero seem to say you needed to cook them down and usually, it's usually for about 10 minutes or so. One recipe actually said it was because it enhanced the flavors and it actually blended all of the flavors together when you cooked it. None of the rest of them said that I saw, so, but I can assume, I can reasonably assume that that's probably the reason that you cook um, all of these recipes with habaneros. So I'm gonna get this kitchen cleaned up and then see how this sauce tastes. Maybe with some chips. So I don't know if that's a lot, but I'm gonna give it a try. It was pretty warm before I cooked it, as far as the spicy heat, so we'll see how this goes. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. 
mean, you wouldn't want a lot of it. It's just a good flavor, but the sweet of the mango and then just a little bit of heat of the habaneros. Mm. Obviously this sauce has got a lot of mango flavor to it, but it's got that kind of that aftertaste heat to it that is just That's delicious. So finish the pineapple sauce too. It is finished simmering and I'm gonna let that cool down and then I'll give that one a try too, but the mango sauce is yummy. So the EOB came down and said I couldn't get a reaction, but you can hear her eating. That's the second chip. What do you think? This will go good on lobster tacos or something. Mm. Okay, so the pineapple habanero has cooled down now. And I'm gonna try it. Mm. Mm. I tell you what, it would really go good on some, like some fish tacos or something like that. Lobster or shrimp or that kind of thing. It's got a really good tangy flavor. This one has, because of the vinegar, this one has more of a of a of a tangy flavor with the vinegar bits. But with the pineapple and the habanero, it's really sweet and spicy at the same time, but it's not fire, it's not just burn. It's really good. I'm gonna have to make a couple more batches of these because I'm gonna have to figure out if I can can it so I can preserve it, because wow, that's good stuff. So there you go. A couple of easy recipes for today. I'm gonna make a couple more batches because I need to get rid of these mangoes and the pineapples so they don't go bad. And um, thanks for watching and until next time, cheers. This is actually how it's supposed to come out with the two half slices, the core and the outer edge is all done. Perfectly, so I'll have a little bit of cleanup on these to get some pineapple off of that But really if you want just the pineapple, that's how it's supposed to work It's always the one that's off-camera that works perfectly though